Welcome back to another episode of the KC Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course, pleased to be joined by the head football coach of Saginaw Heritage. That, of course, would be Justin Thielen, uh, a good friend of the channel. And uh, as always, uh, good to always talk to you about you guys have been doing really, really well. First off, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me on, Casey. Um, we, we've gotten off to a good start this year with a couple big wins. Um, we host Grand Blank this week, so it's, it's definitely going to be our biggest challenge of the year. But but one that we're pretty excited for. It's a measuring stick game for us in a lot of ways. So coming into this year, what 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 did you expect from this team that you have? Well, we returned a lot from last year. I mean, I mean, we had uh, a number of sophomores that were big contributors for us last year, a number of juniors. We, we lost some really good seniors as well, but especially at the skilled positions, we return a lot of guys who, who uh, have played some really important football for us and had the ball in their hands. And so I, I you know, I knew that we had, some potential to do some things offensively. We've been extremely efficient to start the year, but I think, you know, given that a lot of the, a few of them, it's their third year playing varsity football. Uh, it's my third year in the program. So we feel like our roots are really well established at this point. And our guys have been extremely comfortable on both sides of the ball. We talk all the time about how games are just an extension of practice. And if you're doing things the right way, you've played the game four times that week before, before Friday night or Thursday night rolls around and, and that's kind of how our guys have operated this year and so really excited about the start but uh you know it, it honestly doesn't mean anything at this point especially with an opponent like Grand Blank rolling into town yeah for sure and you've had a lot of players that have done a lot of things but obviously the big one that everyone's going to notice is what braden has been able to do yeah Braylon's I mean he, he's a third year varsity guy for us as a junior um extremely athletic he's a really good basketball player as well. Um, this is very gifted. He's got great body control. His, his top end speed has, has greatly improved from last year to this year. He was pretty banged up the summer going into his sophomore year, and now he's been healthy. He was able to run track last year. And so as, as his top end speed has developed, I think his game's really taken off to the point where, um, you know, he, he's made a lot of big plays for us to start the year. I think he was seven catches for 289 on Thursday night, and he had four touchdowns. Um, he was really explosive, and he's a guy that that just creates mismatch for us, mismatches for us on the perimeter, and gives us numbers advantages elsewhere. Yeah, for sure. So going into um, a big game like this in Grand Blanc, obviously, you know, successful program. Obviously, everybody knows what they did last year. Um, new head coach this year, obviously a familiar face to the Flint area. Yep. But going into this, going into this game, you mentioned it was a measuring stick for this team. What do you have to do to get a big win against Grand Blanc? I think it's it's stick to what we know leads to success for us. We talk all the time about running the ball, stopping the run, and, and winning the turnover battle. And how do we do those things? You play with great pad level. You can press space on defense, create it on offense, and, and finish like crazy. And so we're not looking to rewrite the book as we prepare for a really good team. We're looking to perfect, you know, what is our process and what we lead believe leads to – to success. Uh, they're really, really good. They're extremely athletic. They're well coached. And we know we're going to have to be, you know, close to perfect on Friday night to win. But, you know, our kids are very confident and they they believe, like I said, in our process, what we believe leads to success. There's a bunch of young 20 somethings that are taking over as head coaches. <laughs> um, so going into that, going into that, what has it been like, you know, I'm, I, you, I believe you're in your 20s, 30s. Um, yeah. Yep. 29. What, what is that like to, you know, get a job like this at, at just, at just, you know, were you 26? Yeah, I was 26. Yep. Yeah. What was that yeah. like to get that job so young? It's a good question. Um, you know, you learn so much on the fly. I think the biggest thing is that year to year, you have to do so much self-reflecting on what, what worked, why it worked and what didn't work and why that didn't work. And as as you go from year to year, you need to, to perfect your own craft and and uh, use your time as efficiently as possible. I think one of my advantages as a young person is that I can relate to our guys pretty well. Um, and, you know, I've got younger siblings. I'm the oldest of four. My youngest sister is a, a freshman in high school. And so I've spent my entire life around uh, people the ages of our players. And as a result, I think that that I can relate to them pretty well. Um, but I know that year to year for me, I got hired right before, uh, before COVID hit. My first year here, we played five total games, four regular season games. And so that's not a ton of ball to reflect on, but I know that year to year, um, like I said, we've really, I think re reestablished who we are. And, and like I said, perfected that process. You get a feel for what works. We, we play a dogged schedule in the Valley. 
And uh, as a result, you learn a lot about yourself really fast. And I think, you know, we're to the point now where in year three, we feel very confident about who we are and, and what leads to success and how to get there. Is it awkward enough that all your college buddies are coaches? Um, there's a whole group chat I've heard that's that that does that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I've found uh, over the course of my life that I get along with a lot of people who are who are similar to me, you know, so it's it's not surprising that I have a lot of good close friends um, who are coaches as well. And it's always fun on Friday nights, checking in on them right when our game ends and uh, seeing how they did. But, you know, at the same time, we also bounce ideas off of each other. We help each other break down film and, uh, you know, figure out what that week's going to look like. Yeah. So going and then just um, talk about some of the guys that for people that may not follow, you know, your team, just some of the guys, um, some of the names that people would know. Obviously, it's not, not yeah. just everybody out, just for people. So who they who they know to look out for. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to start with our offensive line. I always do. I, I coach the offensive line and we don't, uh, we don't have any success without those guys. We've got two tackles that we think are really, really good. Senior Carlos Lopez and uh, sophomore Ethan Kratz on the right side. Uh, our guards, Jackson Mason and Ian McClory, are two seniors. They've been really good for us. We've got a junior center, Josh Walker, um, who's, who's had a really good start to his year as well. Those guys pave, pave holes for us like crazy. I, I mentioned it when we were talking before we got rolling here. I mean, we, we ran for 300 yards, 303 yards on 23 carries on Thursday night. And, you know, the success that Braylon has, the success that we have in the past game doesn't happen without those guys opening up huge holes on the inside. Um, obviously Braylon's had a huge year. He's got five touchdowns in two games, over 400 yards, uh, six touchdowns actually had a pick six as well. You know, he's a name that a lot of people know, but the guys in the backfield have done a heck of a job. Tommy Churchill's been you know, 10 carries for 214 and 10 carries for 150 on Thursday against him. He's well over 10 yards a carry. I think Ty Robertson's run for four touchdowns in two games. Uh, we've got a junior quarterback, Ethan Mason, who's completing over 70% of his passes, five touchdowns in two games. Um, and then we've got a lot of guys, you know, Karen to Pryor, CC Cork, the uh, other senior receivers. Our entire defense has been really good. We've got a lot of guys who uh, who don't necessarily get their name in the paper as much, but let's set the stage for, for success. You know, we talk all the time about this is the most, the most selfless sport in the world. And for us to, to be successful, there are a lot of guys whose names might not get mentioned from the jump who are uh, leading to success for the entire group, you know? And I, I think uh, you, you don't have success without buy-in on that end. And we've seen that on both sides of the ball, but especially offensive. And, and I think our defense played a really good game um, on Thursday as well, we had a stretch in the second quarter where the pace got so incredibly frenetic that our defense got worn down a little bit. Um, and we gave up a few scores to, to a really athletic and, and I think really good flushing team too. So long winded answer to your question. I gave you some names, but like I said, I always want to start with the O line uh, because without them, um, we don't have success. All right. Well, I know you got to, I know you got to get back to teaching, um, but Justin Thielen, thank you so much for, uh, for taking some time to talk with us and good luck this weekend against Grand Blank. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Casey. I appreciate you.